Welcome back painting friends. Today we are going to paint a monarch butterfly, which is a request from one of our viewers. So the colors you're going to need is a light blue, white, green, yellow, purple, orange, and black. I always use my same brushes. So I've got my one inch flat brush, my 10, six, and one round brush. Remember to have a cup of water and a rag handy for cleaning those brushes. So let's get started. Um, we're gonna start off by making our background and our background is gonna be a mix of some really light yellowish greens and then some flowers. So with my number or with my one inch flat brush, I'm actually just gonna paint some big spaces of yellow. So two big spaces of yellow. And then with those spaces of yellow, I'm just gonna brush on some light green. So just taking some green right on top of that yellow just kind of mixing these in. This is gonna be kind of a blurry background that we're gonna make for our butterfly. I'm going to wash this brush and set it off to the side because the rest of my flowers we are going to lay out using, um, just kind of going away from the space that our butterfly's at. So we're gonna draw our butterfly out and then the rest of it we're going to use a different brush to add on. So I like to draw with my number 10 round brush, but if this is not your favorite brush to draw with, use whichever one your favorite is. And I'm gonna use yellow paint to create my butterfly outline. So with this paintbrush, I'm gonna grab some yellow paint and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a flower over in this area. So I'm just gonna make kind of the center of the flower here. That's the only part I really have to worry about right now. So it's just an oval right there at the center. And then for my butterfly itself, I'm gonna have my butterfly kind of on top of the flower. So I'm gonna make the head of my butterfly, which is another oval right here. And then I'm gonna just work on the wings. So the wing of a monarch butterfly is gonna start right here at its head, and it's gonna kind of come up at a curved line. From that curved line, there's gonna be a very gentle bump and then a bigger one. So it almost looks like the top of a heart. Now from right below this first one, we're gonna make another curved line that's gonna meet up with this one. And this one is going to just simply round down and then rejoin back up here. Now we're not gonna see the back of the butterfly body because it's back here in this area. And the reason we wanted to draw this out first is because all of the area away from this, we are going to be putting in some spots of purples and blues for our flowers. So to do that, I'm gonna use my number 10 round brush and I'm gonna use mixtures of purple paint and just kind of add dots like this. I don't want it to be super nice and organized. I want some areas to be dark and some areas to be light, but I'm gonna do this with both purple and blue, just spots of colors to fill in these open spaces. If your brush gets too messy or it gets too dirty or you think that you need to add some more white, just wipe your brush off and then go back in. So our goal is to kind of have a, a messy, almost a not focused background of flowers behind our bird. I mean, our monarch butterfly.
When our background's finished, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and paint in our butterfly black, okay? So that first oval right here, make sure that you don't leave any of that yellow space behind. You want your butterfly to look like it is in front of those flowers. Now I will say that I'm gonna leave just the smallest little smidge of yellow between the two wings that I remember where I had the two wings separating. But other than that, we are gonna outline our butterfly. We are gonna paint the entire thing in. We're gonna let this dry. When we come back, we will add in our butterfly details and our flower. Now that we have our dry background, let's go ahead and knock out our flower and then our butterfly. So you can make your flower any colors you want, but since I've already got the purple and blue background, I am going to stick with that purple and blue idea. I'm also gonna add a little bit of yellow and orange to my background for the center of some of the flowers. So right here, I'm gonna start by painting this in yellow. And then I'm gonna take some orange and I'm just gonna tap it on. I don't want it to totally blend. I want it to be kind of splotchy like the background is. And then with that paintbrush still dirty, I'm just gonna go through here and I'm just gonna add little spots of some orange and yellows where maybe some of the tops of these flowers might be showing through. So just a little bit, I don't wanna overdo it and not all of them are gonna have it. Then I can wash that brush off really good because when I go in with my purple, I don't want that to be a predominant color on there, that orange and yellow. So I've now got my purple and I'm just gonna go through here and I'm just gonna make these long skinny petals that kind of fall. So each petal is gonna start right here at the yellow. And then I'm gonna take some white paint and I'm just gonna kind of brush it along those edges. I can even take a little bit of blue and put it right down the center if I want. And that's how I'm gonna lay these petals out. So each one of these are just gonna kind of come down here. They can just fall right off my canvas. I'm gonna go with a little bit more white paint and just kind of do the edges of these petals so that they really stand out and they're separated. And then to kind of connect these areas together, I'm gonna to take a little bit of the yellow paint and I'm just going to tap gently, making sure that they don't mix too much and I'm gonna tap those two colors together. Now orange, and, or sorry, yellow and purple will mix to make a brownish color. They are going to create a um, neutral color. So make sure that if you start to mix them too much, just wipe that brush off and grab some more.
Now let's start working on our monarch. So our monarch will probably take two coats of paint unless of course you wanna start out with just making your shapes in white. Um, so that's up to you. I am gonna make my shapes in white and go over them with color. That way I know I've got them laid out. So with my paintbrush, and this is really gonna be a, a step-by-step -step here. So with my paintbrush up here at the top, we are gonna make a long skinny teardrop shape. From that long skinny teardrop shape, we are gonna make a couple of lines that kind of shoot out to the back of it. So I'm just gonna make a couple more right here. And these are all gonna end in the same spot. Then back over here, we're gonna have a little bit of a bigger shape. So we're gonna have it kind of come down into these areas right here. And we're gonna have it be a bump. From there, we're gonna do a couple more of these little rounded teardrop shapes that are gonna connect back to this bump. And then down in this area, we're gonna do that same thing. So we're gonna kinda of come right here, make a little space, fill it in, and then add some more little sections that connect to it. Now, down here in this bottom part, there's actually gonna be a bigger space that's gonna look kinda of like a big heart. So we're gonna start right here and it's gonna come out and it's gonna have a small bump and then a big bump. That's gonna be our heart shape. Actually kinda of looks more like a harp than a heart. But it's gonna come out, have a small bump and a big bump and come right back up. And then we're gonna to start to lay out all of these long skinny areas Remember with a monarch, there's always those distinct black lines in between everything, so that's what we're trying to stick with. So these areas are gonna be filled in and keeping those long distinct lines. So even if your area has to be a little bit of a different shape, that's okay. When I looked at monarch picture butterfly, or monarch butterfly pictures to do this, um, a lot of the wings were very differently kind of detailed. One more right here. And in this outside area, we're gonna leave quite a big a space at the back to have our black dots. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna create areas of white, whether they are teardrop shape or oval shape, whatever fits in your space. It's like this one's gonna be more of a teardrop shape. And they are just gonna kind of connect out, leaving the space along this back edge for that, those white dots. So monarch butterflies are well known for having these um, beautiful black and orange and yellow wings and then these detailed white dots. So these white dots are going to be just spaces right along this edge that you're going to drop some paint. Now normally when I make dots I use the back of my brush but I don't want these to be circle. I want them to be spots more than circles. So I'm kind of turning my brush so that I don't have all of the exact same dot pattern but I'm going all the way along this back side of our butterfly wings. You know what I forgot to do is I forgot to go ahead and fill this space right here. And so I'm gonna fill this black space in right here. That should not be yellow anymore. So 
that there's dots is right up here on our body. So I'm gonna take these dots and put them right up here where our body would be, our little monarch head. And I can start to extend these dots as they start to come up towards the head of our monarch. And also down here where they start to go towards the base of our monarch. All right, I'm gonna let this white space dry. And when we come back, we're gonna add in our yellow and our orange. Okay, with my background dry, I'm gonna start to add in my oranges and I actually have a pretty dark orange. And so that orange is gonna be my darkest of my oranges and then I'm just gonna lighten it up. So what I've noticed about these butterflies is there is mostly a darker orange color that will be lightened up as it goes out towards the edges. Also, some of the spaces remain white. And so what I want you to do is I want you to look at some Monarch butterfly pictures before you start painting in your colors. That's what I did. I have about five pictures of different Monarchs pulled up on my computer so that I can see their different colorations. And then I want you to see which one kind of attaches to you, which one speaks to you, and then purpose your coloring that same way. So I'm gonna do just a couple of these darker orange colors and then I'm going to lighten up my orange using yellow and I'm gonna keep some of my spaces white, but I will be making them a second coat of white to really kind of solidify their opaqueness. So when you get your wings finished, you can take a little bit of yellow paint at the back of some of these and just add like a small highlight to it. Make sure your uh, orange is still wet so that it blends well, but just the back top of some of these edge pieces by adding that little bit of yellow to it will make them really truly pop.
the last thing I'm gonna do with my butterfly is just kind of clean up my black spaces. Um, you know, when I put on the white paint, I put on the orange paint, the yellow paint, it really kind of sometimes uh, destroys those black lines I initially had. So any place where I think I need to clean it up, I'll just go in with my paintbrush and just kind of clean up those spaces a little bit. I am gonna put myself in speed motion to do that because there's a lot of little details to clean up. This butterfly is just so much crisper and so much cleaner now. All right, let's add our last couple details in and we are gonna call this painting finished. So when I paint skinny black lines, I like to use my number six round brush with a little bit of watered down paint. If this stresses you out, use a Sharpie when it's dry. That's totally up to you. But I am gonna go in and add in my antennae and I'm gonna have one be kind of going straight with a little curve at the end. And the other one is going to be curved down into this flower. I'm also going to add on here a couple of little legs. So just a straight line out and then a straight line down. My next one's going to be at a different angle down. And I'm going to add a itty bitty last one back here. Now remember, when you're finished, you have to sign your artwork. I always put my initials down in the bottom right corner in a color that I know is gonna show up well. Remember that I never get to see what you're painting at home unless you post it on our Facebook page, Painting With A Purpose. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Painting With A Purpose, so you are kept up to date on all of our latest tutorials. And remember, as always, stay kind, stay creative, and stay safe. Have a great day, friends. Bye now.